What's up everybody, David here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to step up your bass tone using Toneforge Misha Mansoor. Now when mixing the demos for the new Misha Mansoor plugin, specifically this Poppy demo, I decided to try throwing the plugin on a bass guitar, and turns out it sounds really cool. So today I'm going to show you guys how I got that bass tone and some different ways that you can use Toneforge Misha Mansoor to take your bass guitars to the next level. Let's jump into Studio One. All right, so first thing I want to do here is show you guys the guitar tone that I used in the song. Let's check it out. Now, I don't want to say these guitars are thin, but there's definitely not a ton of bottom end in this tone, and I did that on purpose. I wanted them to be very mid-range focused. I wanted some, uh, well, I, I found in the amp a lot of like high-end pick attack that I really liked, and I just really liked that tone. So I stuck with that, but I also knew that I'd have to really hold it down in the low end with the bass guitar. Um, and I also kind of wanted the bass to have an attack that kind of played around with what the guitars had. And yeah, that was my goal going into this bass tone. So let's get started. This is a dual tone type of thing. So I have the regular clean bass tone, then I have the distorted bass tone that's blend in, but I'm weird and I can't name it, right? So I'm just gonna name that bass grit. So let's get started with the regular tone. I'm gonna shut all this off and just go through each of the plugins and show you how I got the um, the regular non-distorted bass tone. So this is the dry DI. That is my new Squire vintage 70s jazz bass that I just got and it is tuned to drop C and I think it sounds pretty dope. So first things first on the list is the SHB Ignite Amps bass head. I'm running a good amount of gain on here, so it's kind of distorted already, but nothing too crazy. Then I have a cabinet simulator here. This is the Ampeg 8x10D6. I got this in a pack of free amp sims a long time ago, and I just loved them ever since, so I keep using them. Now it goes into the Wave C4, and I'm <laughs> I'm kind of going a little crazy uh, from like 80 to 200 hertz here. Uh, I don't like that in bass guitars. I feel like it just kind of muddies up the mix and gets in the way, so I usually tend to go a little crazy on that. And I'm also attacking the high end here just to tame some of that picking. For the most part, it's pretty consistent, but there's a few spots where I pick kind of hard, and I'm just really trying to catch those. So next we have it going into the virtual mix rack. First thing we have here is the virtual tube collection, the New York version, which this one is a very mid-range focused uh, tube, so I think it works really well for bass, and you're not gonna hear a massive difference. It's just kind of giving it a little bit of mid-range and a little bit of presence, and yeah, it just sounds cool. You hear a little bit of bottom end there as well, but it's just a little bit of spice to the bass guitar. That sounds really cool. So next we have the SSL EQ. On this one, I'm pulling out a little bit at 7.5. Once again, just kind of taming some picking a little bit. And then I'm also adding a little bit at, what is this, 3.6, just to give it some of that mid-range bass clanky goodness. Once again, not a massive difference. And then I'm going into the FG Stress, which is of course the Distressor emulation. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. As you can see here, I use the Bass Guitar Aggressive preset. I use this all the time, pretty much on every bass guitar, on every one of my songs. It just sounds amazing. One day I thought I'd try it and it sounded awesome and I've just stuck with it. It just works and it's easy, it's there. And yeah, it just sounds awesome. So I usually just load this up, dial in the input, dial in the output and I'm good to go. Like I said, it just works, it sounds super cool. So then I have one last EQ on the chain, only two bands on this one, I'm cutting out some of the low end, and then I'm also cutting out more at 160 hertz. I told you guys I do not like that frequency on bass, uh, so I go a little crazy with it. Of course, you can go too far here and completely neuter the bass, so just be careful. Uh, but this is what the EQ is doing. Thank you. 
I just think taking care of this area makes the base much more focused and just less flubby. I want low end, I don't want flubby. So yeah, that is I guess what we can call the clean bass tone. So I'm gonna test that in the mix and see how it sounds. So it's holding down the low end, I really like that. And it's also kind of dancing around in the mix. You hear the pick attack here and there, and that's the vibe I was going for, but I definitely wanted a little bit more. So now, what I then did was duplicate the entire track with all the processing, and then I just threw Tone Forge Misha Mansoor on top. So I'm gonna shut this off, and then turn it on and show you what kind of difference it makes. Now, it doesn't sound bad by any means, but it also doesn't sound like really, really good, I guess. But that's how it usually is for these distorted bass type things. Like they don't sound amazing on their own. Although I think this sounds kind of good, um, but it's for blending. This is not your whole bass tone. As far as what I did to get that, I'm not using the precision drive. I'm on the crunch channel with very, very low gain. Took out all the lows, took out some of the highs, went for mostly mids. Um, Took out a little bit of presence, adding some harmonics just to make those uh, those highs pop a little bit more. And then a little bit of compression to just hold down that picking. Next we have the cabinet. I'm using the JST Match Cab because it's once again very mid-range heavy and it works for bass. And then I have some EQ going on. I find that Tone Forge Misha Mansoor is kind of harsh in the 3 to 5K so I took that out on bass as well. I'll shut that off just so you can see what kind of difference that's making. <laughs> Once again, not a massive difference, but it's just kind of taming that high end a little bit because it can get a little crazy here. And then that's all I did for the grit tone. It's the same exact tone as the regular one with just the Misha Mansoor on top. So now let's combine that in with the regular bass. Man, that is exactly what I was going for. I think that sounds so dope. So we're gonna do that once again, but this time in the entire mix. Let's do it. Now that doesn't completely change the mix, honestly it doesn't, but it adds a little bit of liveliness to the bass. It The bass is kind of just dancing around in the mix, it pokes out when it wants to, it dials back when it feels like it, and I just really like that liveliness that I got with this tone, and a lot of it was definitely uh, thanks to that Tone Forge Misha Mansoor. Uh, that was definitely the little bit of spice that I needed to work this into the mix. Now. One thing that's really cool about this, about using Tone Forge Misha Mansoor, is that there are so many options for bass guitar because of how this infinite gain knob works. So you have, for the crunch channel at least, I mean you could use the lead channel but I feel like that might be a little overbearing. Uh, for the crunch channel you have 12 different types of, uh, of tone stacks, of types of gain and types of tone. And you can get a lot of different results with a bass guitar. You can get more mid-range ones, more honky ones, more low mids, more crazy high frequency ones. And yeah, I'm just gonna show you. I'm gonna play the bass guitar and cycle through all the different tone options that you have. All right, so let's do that one more time, but let's combine it with the regular bass tone just to see how that's gonna change the actual tone.
Like I said, there's a lot of different options you have for Tone here. There's a lot of different ways you could go with Tone Forge Misha Mansoor. Now, of course, keep in mind, I'm keeping the gain pretty low on the amp here. Uh, maybe about one to three, never anymore usually, maybe four depending on the tone, but it can get really, really overbearing and harsh really quickly if you go too far on the gain. So definitely try to keep it low. You could also experiment with a Horizon Precision Drive as well. I have not just because the amp worked really well for me and I loved what it was doing, but don't forget you also have this other option. Now let's listen to it one more time just because I really like this bass tone. Oh, it's so sick. Now, I forgot to mention this in that video, but of course, make sure to also try out all the different cabs because each cab is gonna give you a totally different response, especially on the mids and the highs of the tone. So make sure you go through those just to find the perfect solution. So that's it for today, guys. I just happened to try this while I was mixing that demo and turns out it sounds really cool. So I thought I would show you to maybe give you some ideas for next time you're mixing bass. I've seen people do this before with Tone Forge Menace and it sounded great, but I was just really impressed with the Misha Mansoor plugin because of all the different tone stack options, all the different cabs you have, the precision drive, there's just a lot of options to get a really cool gritty bass tone. So let me know what you think down in the comments below and of course do not forget to like and subscribe. There are new videos every single week and you don't want to miss any content. So if you want to make sure you don't miss the content, ring the little the little bell thing on the, on the channel. I, I don't know. Everyone else is saying it so I feel like I should say it. Make sure to ring the bell so you get notified when I post videos. And yeah, just ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring it. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. My name is David, and I will see you guys next time.